we've done a lot of thinking about this over the last uh, couple of years. And traditionally, um, both the Planning District Commission and its uh, localities here in the Northern Neck uh, have taken a, a more of a reactive approach than a proactive approach. And that's rapidly changing uh, because of the urgency of the issues uh, that we're facing. And uh, I'll second just about everything that Kurt said about um, wanting to balance uh, efforts to create and generate more resiliency uh, with uh, maintaining the status quo uh, as far as maintaining property values in the tax base and making sure revenues uh, remain on par and, and, and level. And certainly from an economic development standpoint, there's, a, uh, there's more thought that you can put into uh, diversifying um, you know, your revenue streams. Uh, but what we've done here in the Northern Net Planning District Commission is try to take a more comprehensive, actual, truly comprehensive approach to planning. Um, and some of the things that Shannon mentioned early on in her um, in her presentation is is pretty much what we're trying to do. It it revolves around uh, seeing the connections and planning and in, in integrating plans, uh, and that involves. Uh, taking a, a, a data-driven approach that relies heavily on uh, engagement. Uh, and when it comes to engagement, um, the importance of expanded engagement um, really, really kind of helps you uh, move towards a, a planning endeavor that includes more people. And I'm not just reaching out to residents, uh, but to other stakeholders. So for instance, uh, when we typically do our hazard mitigation planning here in the Northern Neck, um, you know, we reach out to uh, limited staff capacity at the local governments to get input. Um, and what we've done through the raft is expand uh, that group of people that we would reach out to to receive input in our planning uh, to include uh, other agencies such as the Department of Social Services or the Health Department, um, other, other departments within uh, within the locality that normally wouldn't be a part of the process. So we can kind of generate an expanded way of thinking about resilience uh, and, and mitigation planning. And that's really our overall approach is uh, trying to work with the local governments to incorporate uh, the regional plans that the Planning District Commission is charged to complete on their behalf uh, and that they adopt uh, into their comprehensive planning and uh, eventually capital improvement planning uh, and, and, and trying to identify ways that you can uh, create that connectivity. But you really can't do that without really looking at and gathering as much locally sourced data as possible. And there are a lot of data gaps. And I think more, more and more, uh, our local governments are developing the capacity uh, to collect data uh, and to be able to analyze that data and, and incorporate it into their planning processes. Uh, and it's a it's really a long game. Uh, we have to kind of look uh, towards the horizon and keep our eye uh, on that. Um, it's very easy to trip up on yourself uh, if, you, if you look too closely at uh, immediate needs. Uh, although that's very important, um, we, can, we can do that. Uh, we have programs such as a home elevation program uh, that looks at the immediate needs of people who need to elevate their home out of a floodplain. Um, but looking at the longer game in, in a more comprehensive approach uh, that you don't just have flooding uh, on, on, on the coastal fringes of, of, of the Northern Neck, uh, but you have inundation happening in the inland area. And that's, that's typically an underserved uh, geographic locale, lo location in the Northern Neck that doesn't really get looked at a whole lot, um, such as the inundation of septic systems. I think that was mentioned earlier. And that's a real resilience issue. And it's also an environmental health and public health issue uh, it impacts local water quality, which impacts our local economy, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, what, what we've done for the last uh, year and some change through the raft is uh, work with all 10 of our localities, six towns and four counties uh, to develop an implementation team that will look earnestly at resilience. And this is important and define resilience based on what the needs of the locality are. Um, you know, Brian uh, mentioned a very good definition of resilience and sustainability. Keeping sustainability in mind, 
but defining resilience for what it means for your local government. And that could be fluid and that can change. You know, it, it really relies on uh, what your priorities are at the time uh, and, and getting those priorities straight. And once you've defined what resilience means to you, then you can identify actions that you can take to improve resilience. And there's no sense in reinventing the wheel. There's a lot of planning that goes in. Uh, it's the regular planning that occurs, such as hazard mitigation planning, uh, water supply planning, transportation planning, that, that really happens kind of at a regional scale that's adopted by the local governments that you can incorporate resilience into and incorporate those things uh, into your comprehensive plan. Uh, I know a lot of our uh, uh, localities that are participating in the raft have identified uh, as, as Elizabeth had pointed out, comprehensive planning and incorporating resilience into comprehensive plan. Uh, and that starts with looking at every plan that you have and trying to integrate them uh, and, and then thinking about it from a resilience uh, and sustainability uh, lens. And that all starts with uh, collecting uh, more data. So we've used that process uh, to collect more information, but primarily our goal was to start a, a a new way of engaging with uh, local stakeholders, um, whether it's intergovernmental or interagency or interdepartmental, uh, and, then, and then expand that out to how you engage uh, with your community and with your residents. Um, but it, it, starts, it starts by creating a more expansive um, engagement process during the planning process. Uh, finally, I'll, I'll, I'll say that uh, as we are moving into a, a, a hazard mitigation plan update, um, we're thinking more about resilience. Uh, the Planning District Commission, uh, myself in particular, is participating in the development of the statewide resilience master plan. Uh, and everything that I do is keeping that process in mind so that there's continuity uh, between what the state has in mind and what the, and what the locality has in mind. And that those things um, are, uh, are in line and, and, and moving in the same and moving in the same direction. And what we want to do is uh, make our hazard mitigation planning process more of a hazard mitigation planning and resilience building process, um, utilizing that 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 existing structure, expanding upon it uh, to to slowly move uh, towards actionable items that the local governments can take to create uh, more more resilience. <clears throat> 